Hey guys, it's Matt Pittman with Meat Church and welcome back to my outdoor kitchen. Today we're going to be making a classic pastrami brisket. So today we're going to be taking a classic and pastrami and putting our Texas barbecue twist on it. It's going to be really simple. We're going to make a pastrami brine that we're going to submerge a brisket in that we've already trimmed and we're going to let it soak in that brine for 10 days and then we're going to smoke it. But ironically, I was shooting another video this morning on a beef rib taco with my buddy Cody Sharp and I thought, hey, I should have Cody join in on this. Good to see you again. I know it's been I a know, long time. I know it's been a long time. A few minutes. It's been a long time. This is just kind of funny to me. We did not plan this. We were shooting a pastrami brisket video today, but Cody just posted a pastrami brisket um, from his restaurant, Myers Garden, that he actually smoked um, on a mill scale. So I thought, why not hop in another video and get yeah. it started? I don't know if you'll be available in a week and a half to smoke it. I hope so. But we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll, see. we'll see what the boss says. Yeah. So, you know, you've got to make a pastrami brine and there's lots of recipes to do this. This recipe will be down in the description, but the key is you have to use curing salt. So not like pink Himalayan salt, this is the key. But I'm gonna let Cody talk about what we're dropping in here today, why I light this little fire here and get the, get the burner going. Yeah, so obviously like Matt said, curing salt is, is one of, if not the most important part uh, of the process. Uh, the curing salt, some people call it prog powder number one. Um, you'll find it at uh, a lot of meat processing facilities, uh, places that do wild game processing, places that make sausages, stuff like that, if you can't find it at a grocery store. Uh, but basically it's gonna help maintain the color, uh, but it's also going to help us with, you know, because we're brining it for 10 days, it's gonna allow, uh, you know, or it's actually not going to allow any kind of bacteria or spoilage to happen. So, so talk to me about how you guys did this at the restaurant, why you did it. So it started with St. Patrick's Day, obviously, you know, pastrami and corned beef is a big thing. Uh, Ruben's one of my favorite sandwiches. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we, we started talking about doing pastrami for that particular day and it just kind of became this thing that I, I really enjoyed doing. And, you know, I figured, you know, why not kind of put our Texas barbecue spin on it and, yeah. you know, instead of smoking and steaming it, we're just gonna roll it all the way through on a mill scale and- Smoke it through like normal. Yeah, so treat it like Texas Texas brisket. All right, so, here we go. Kosher salt, you got, got about, about a cup and a half of kosher salt. You're going into a gallon of water. One gallon of water, which by the way, it's gonna take more than a gallon to submerge this brisket, but we don't have a three gallon pot, so we're gonna add a little more water later, so that's key. And then of course you got uh, one cup of brown sugar. Uh, you can use regular granulated sugar. I like brown sugar because it kind of adds a little bit more character. It's got those kind of caramel notes to it. Uh, and then we use pickling spice. So there's a lot of recipes out there. You know, you can use all the separate spices and, you know, toast them and do all the things. But I've found that just using a, a classic pickling spice works just as well. Uh, and then some uh, minced garlic. You can use whole garlic cloves if you got that in your refrigerator at home. Just give them a little little crush with a knife and throw them in there. We talked about garlic is optional, but I love garlic. So. I love garlic too. And then of course you're, you're curing salt and uh, we're just gonna bring it to a boil and- About two tablespoons of that. Let it, uh, let it all dissolve and then we're gonna add some more water and dump it over there our brisket. We go. So we're gonna heat this up. It doesn't have to come completely to a boil, but we wanna dissolve those sugars in here. So we're gonna be stirring this, heating it up and then we're gonna cool it all the way down, just like when you do a brine at the holidays. Uh, we don't wanna pour hot liquid over a cold brisket. So we're gonna let this heat up uh, and dissolve, and then we're gonna cool it down and we'll be back. All right, guys, so we have actually cooled this off by adding a little ice to it to speed it up. We've got a brisket here. This brisket actually came from a barbecue school. I did this last weekend. Um, I trimmed it for the class. I'll put a link here or a card up above um, for my how to trim a brisket video, but this is just a prime packer brisket. Started out at 17 pounds. I took out at least three to four pounds for sure. So um, I cooked mine fat side up. That's why I'm showing you this side, but also this one came with a huge gash in it. So we're going to put this in this food safe container and then let's dump this over. Mm. 
Man, and we're not going to have to add any more. No, you're not. I would love it. Well, from here, I'm thinking we're going to let this soak for 10 days. I might reach in and flip that thing over, um, you know, a time or two just because I mess with stuff. But otherwise, I'm going to let it sit in my refrigerator. And again, hope I see you in 10 days. Absolutely. We'll get to smoking this thing. Right on. Sounds good. All right, let's cover her up. And off to the fridge we go. Hey guys, well, it's been nine and a half days. Um, I've been at an event tonight at TX Whiskey Ranch in Fort Worth, and Cody said he could actually come back uh, tomorrow to finish this on the 10th day. So I convinced my video buddy Kirk here to come over and let's pull this out of the brine. Let's rinse it, let's season it, and I'm gonna pull an all-nighter and smoke this because Cody's willing to come over in the morning. So here we go. So here's what our setup was. We covered it in foil and we had put a gallon bag of water in it to basically hold the brisket down in the solution. And I didn't have to do anything to this. Uh, I did flip it one time just cuz. Oh, that's heavy. That means the brine's worked. Here we go. That sucker's pretty heavy. And it smells really good, by the way. So all we need to do is rinse this brisket completely thoroughly and then bring it back and season it and put it on the pit. All right, the brisket's totally rinsed off. Super important. Otherwise, you're going to have all this salt on here. It's going to be way too salty. So like I said, just rinsed it very thoroughly. Now I'm going to hit it with a slather. Optional, like I always say, um, I'm going with a mustard slather. Really common in Texas barbecue, and heck, mustard goes with pastrami. Like we always say, you're not going to taste it anyway, so don't be fretting what it is. All right. Got her nice and slathered up. There, you remember that old gash they left us? Thanks, thanks again. So let's talk about our seasoning here. So we're gonna season this with a pastrami rub. Yeah, Meat Church doesn't sell one, but I made one. I'll put the recipe down in the description. This is just three things. It's coriander, it's black pepper, and it's paprika. And you can use a ton of it because there's no salt in it. There's a ton of salt in this already. I'm gonna do something that a lot of people don't do, which is put a little holy cow on it. Now there's salt in this, so I'm not gonna do too, too much. Just a little. And then I'm going to hammer it with Matt's pastrami rub. And I know this is good because we did pastrami beef tongue at Chefs for Farmers Food and Wine Festival several years ago. And this is what we used, and it was good. So you can go super duper heavy, help with that bark. We're going to pat it in, get all the sides, get the, get the fat side, let it adhere, and we're going to get to cooking. I think this is what you would call a liberal coating of seasoning. Okay, looks pretty good to me. Looks beautiful. Smells great too, by the way. Dang, I used a lot. Okay, I'm gonna pat this in. I'm gonna let this adhere. Let's give it 15 minutes, and I'm gonna get the mill scale ready, and we're gonna start smoking. Let's get this brisket on the pit. We're going point side to the fire as always. There we go. Talk about the cook. I'm gonna roll 250 degrees with post oak all night. I'm a nice guy, so I'm gonna send my video crew home. So the only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this brisket at some point. I'll talk to y'all about that when I see you back in the morning. We're gonna be shooting to, you know, standard cook. We're gonna cook this to 203 to 205 or so. Uh, probably not going to be real probe tender because of all that brine that's inside of it. Um, so that's what we're shooting for, and I'll see you all in the morning. Good morning, y'all. Look who I found. Oh, Cody made it back this morning. I slept in the car, actually. I was, I've was. i been here since yesterday. <laughs> well, I've been here with my monster since last night. 
Well, the brisket is done. Uh, let me grab that and we can talk about it. So like I told you guys, I would you know cook it my uh, normal way, which is basically, I just let it roll at 250 till it hit in the 170s and then I wrapped it in butcher paper, at which point I ran the mill scale up to 275 degrees to help render out the fat and finish it up. Now the difference in this and a normal brisket that I would teach you is, you know, we can't do the normal fill stuff that you would do on this brisket because it's pretty dense yeah. with all that brine in there. So we agreed that we would take this to about 205. Um, and I'll just show you here with the, with the Thermapin 1. Yeah, that's kind of where we are right in the middle of the flat. Well, it's exactly where we are, to be honest with you. And we're not gonna open it up. Um, we're just gonna let it rest. So I've got a hotel pan here and I'd love to let this rest overnight, but we've agreed as a team that we will let it rest two hours at ambient temperature, which is really the minimum I would ever rest any brisket. And then we're gonna go from there. Uh, but Cody's joined us. Yeah. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna end this thing with a Reuben. We both love Reubens and he makes an amazing Russian dressing. So we thought, let me bust this table for you real quick, sir. Oh, I appreciate that. Table for one. <laughs> So Cody, why don't you tell us? Let's talk about this amazing Meyer Garden Russian dressing. That so we're gonna make. we, you know, as we talked about, we're both big fans of Reuben sandwiches. Um, you know, I think we've both been to the the, the Great Cats Deli in in New York and one in Houston as well. Um, I've not been to that one. Just that New York. That one's great. Uh, but we wanted to do something that was, you know, a Russian dressing, but with a little bit of a Texas spin on it. So uh, we decided Hello, to add friends. some some pickled jalapenos, which are one of my favorite things on the planet. And then, of course, you got the uh, the gold standard of mayonnaise, Dukes. And uh, so this instead of pickles, we're going pickled, pickled jalapenos. Yeah. So this is another one of those recipes. Kind of eyeball it, you know, however you feel like doing it. Of course, you got to use the Whataburger ketchup. Are you mad that we didn't get Whataburger mustard? Or is the I'm, a, I'm, a little, okay? I'm a little upset, yeah. but I think I'll be all right. So I like to do you know, two parts mayonnaise to one part ketchup. And then I really like a little bit more mustard in mine. I like the, the acid and the acidity. Um, We're basically making a condiment suicide here and calling it Russian dressing, yeah. which is what I love. I feel like Russia might be offended, but you know. Good. <laughs> this one's for you, you this friends. Is, yeah. So you're just gonna give it a mix. And then while Matt's chopping up those jalapenos, you know, you don't have to be fancy with it. This is your own restaurant in your own house to so give it a rough chop. I like to get little bites of the, the jalapeno in there. You get that nice little... Is that fine enough for you? Per, it's or perfect. You, you're so that, nice to me. That nice little acidic heat I'll to let you it. pick how much is going in there. Just go ahead and dump it all in there. Oh yeah, baby. A little heat. You know, go big or go home. Texas. And because it is Texas, we're Ooh. definitely gonna add some holy cow, because why not? You don't need to add a lot. There's a lot of salt going on in this already. So you don't need to I'm add I'm personally much. okay if you add a lot. <laughs> we have refills available on meatchurch.com. And that's it. That's pretty Ooh. much our uh, our, our non-traditional Russian dressing, just so I don't get roasted in the comments for not making Well, like everybody Russian. can make this at home. You've got all these ingredients at home, so this is gonna be super easy. Yeah. All right, guys, we are gonna let the brisket rest for two hours. Uh, go put this in the fridge, and we'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys, this brisket has rested exactly two hours, and we've pretty much rested it down to 140. I just tested it, so let's just check here. Look at that. And that's just sitting outside ambient temperature, not in a cooler or anything like that. Um, best brisket in the world, I'd actually like to rest this even longer in a warmer, but we're not waiting. time for that. No, we don't, we don't. So here we go. Let's see how we did. Ooh. All right. Oh man, it's tender underneath. Well, it would help if I flip it on the right side after I just destroyed our bark. I thought that looked like a lot of, not a lot of good bark. See, you know, this is what, uh, this is how you know it's real TV right here. Yeah. <laughs> we don't fake anything <laughs> at the meat church. All right, we're gonna go down here um, on the point end, 
take a couple slices. Ooh. Hey. Thank God it worked. I know, right? <laughs> there you go. I mean, you can see the, the color, the texture. Um, I mean, I know it's a small piece, but the cook. Um, heck, dude, let's get in here and try a bite of this. What am I doing? Dealer's oh, choice. killer. Tastes like pastrami brisket. Man, it's good. I'm going to slice a bunch of slices for our Reuben. What do you think? Man, it's great. That that bark is is killer, and you know that brines all the way through. You get that nice salty bite. And it's going to make a killer sandwich. And on the tenth day, the Lord said, "Let there be pastrami brisket." <laughs> Let's make a Reuben. I think we got to. Got some killer marble rye, and as they say, there's nothing wrong with a little a little pastrami juice on your. Uh, on your bread. Heck no. Ain't nobody mad at that. Let's pile this guy up. I like to go a little bit of sauerkraut because you need the, the acid. And like I said last time, your mom wants you to eat your vegetables. Smells awesome. I gotta tell you, dude, a Reuben has been like my go-to sandwich forever. When I was in corporate America, there was a deli um, beneath our building and I couldn't get away from it. Oh, it's one of my favorite sandwiches and uh, You know, it wasn't something that I ate a whole lot growing up, but Now you can uh, can't convince me otherwise if there's one on the menu, but I like to do a lot of Russian dressing and especially if we're in Texas I would say that's a uh, pretty man-sized sandwich right there. Yeah, that's a that's a Texas sized sandwich You're gonna put this on the menu at uh, Myers Garden man. I wish I could I don't have that much time in my day <laughs> this is go. an investment, but I think it's worth it. We're going in. Absolutely. I'm not, I'm not playing. Um, Golly. Look at that. That's a work of art. Cheers. Dude. Team over. Need a towel? Mm. <laughs> you dressing me. You're not gonna, insane. I'm not gonna lie, it may be the best pastrami sandwich I've had. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, that dressing, let me see that towel. That is so good, and it's not hot. Like no. the pickled jalapenos, like, that was super, super good. You get good. just the slightest amount of heat, but it's just really nice with the rub. Like, it's kind of crazy how that rub and the coriander and the black pepper come through so much more in the sandwich itself. Like, it's almost like the pastrami tastes more like pastrami. That's insane. <laughs> if you made this on the weekends for friends and family, I'm gonna need a nap. They tell you to open this. a restaurant. I mean, we got to go back to this. You know, this is obviously like different texture than a standard brisket. It's a lot more dense, but like still, I feel like I don't know. I'm just gonna say I think it was perfectly That's cooked. Um, yeah, like crazy, crazy good. So this is part of the second season of our hardcore barbecue series. It's a playlist on our YouTube channel. We always say if you like what we're doing, please like and subscribe to the channel. But the amount of barbecue videos that we've been pumping out. Hit that playlist, check them out, see what you think. Cody's been in a few now, I definitely yeah. appreciate you coming out. Absolutely, I thanks for having me, it's been my pleasure. The Wagyu beef rib taco and this, like did you have a favorite one over the other? Man, I'm not gonna lie, I think I like this pastrami sandwich more than This that. is insane, <laughs> but I'm it's, so stoked for this, so. It's gonna make some killer hash tomorrow. Oh, so you're coming back tomorrow to make me breakfast? Yeah, I'll be here to make you breakfast. Or sleeping on your car, dude. yeah. All right, y'all, thanks for watching. You guys uh, tune in every week. We drop weekly how-to cooking videos every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. Central. All the recipes today down in the description. They're also always on meatchurch.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see y'all next time.